meat he called you that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing the spine.
Good morning. Welcome to Crossroads United Methodist Church. It's great to have all of you with us this morning in worship on this Trinity Sunday. We're going to start off with a few announcements today. I'm going to welcome Diana Kuykendall up for our first announcement. Good morning. Let me find where to put this so I don't fall over and make fun of myself. Turn on your video cameras if I do. Okay. Uh, Welcome, welcome. This is, I wanted to announce that um, I'm a member of the VBS or Vacation Bible School Committee, and we are going to do Vacation Bible School this year, yay, in person. And it is scheduled for uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, July 10th, 11th, and 12th. We have had to hold it in July because our camp is now in June. So we're inviting everybody. It's for ages 0 to 100. You don't have to be you can come by yourself, you can bring your grandkids, you can you know, come one night, come two nights, come three nights. Uh, there will be dinner, uh, dinner will be served, and then we'll have, uh, we will travel as groups. We're not gonna break up into individual pods. We'll just assign you to a group, and so you'll be an intergenerational activity. Uh, our theme this year is prayer with the focus on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we uh, will need a few donations. Um, right now, we're, we are doing it with the Shepherd of the Valley, and so we're kind of putting everything together and see what we have, and so next week, we'll have sign-up sheets for anything that we might need. We always need volunteers, people to help in the kitchen to um, cook and serve. We will need volunteers for registration. Uh, you can volunteer one night, two nights, or three nights. We need uh, people to just take the, be with the different groups and make sure you get them to the right places uh, because we will have, uh, this is for the community and we'll have people that'll come in that haven't been in our building before and so we'll need people to guide them around. Uh, we'll need some, uh, maybe cookies later on also. We haven't decided yet, um, but we will have sign-up sheets starting next week. Also, we do need, uh, oh, let's see that I was going to say we needed. Well, we always need volunteers. And then, um, oh, we need decorations to decorate Fellowship Hall. And we're looking for anything festive. Um, no party hats and no whistleblowers. We don't want any of those things. We don't want noisemakers. <laughs> we'll have enough noise. But we do need, like, streamers and things that we can hang on the wall to make it look festive. And so if you have any questions, uh, May, you can ask May or Judy or myself. We had nine volunteers at our first meeting from both churches, and we had a meeting yesterday, and we had six people then. So um, we... Uh, really are excited about this this year. So if you, uh, again, please come and we'll talk, we'll talk to you some more. Thanks. We have a, a really fun announcement to make, a really cool announcement to make. <laughs> Just really cool. Um, so all of our air conditioners that we have been planning for and wishing for and hoping for are done. They're all in, they're all working. And so that's a real joy. Um, I wanna thank all of the folks that were, uh, that spent so many hours here with, with um, the two, com two companies, three companies, two companies that put it in. Uh, Ray Wilson spent a lot of hours with folks here, Rich White, got things, uh, coordinated some, and, uh, and so we really want to thank them. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to use. There's directions on each wall where there's the new air conditioning. Um, what did want to say that it was about $45,000 altogether, and so if you want to donate to that, if you would like to give to that, just um, designate. Just put air conditioning in your designation, and Chris will make sure that it gets where it's supposed to go. But we are really excited that um, in our Sunday school classrooms, the air isn't fighting the swampers anymore. So no more, no more swampers in some of those rooms. So let's rejoice in that. Thank you. Today is birthday anniversary Sunday, and I'm just going to read off these birthdays and anniversaries. 
June 2nd, Barbara Ball. The 7th, Tesla Tarr. The 8th, Andrew Campbell. The 12th, Christopher Klein. Blaine, Blaine Diffendaffer. Uh, and then the 19th, Ellie Kuykendall, Dwayne Berry. The 20th, Maggie Mills. The 23rd, Harold Kuykendall. And Brian Hebert. And then the 24th, Karen Terhune. The 25th, Gary Skinner. And the 27th, Myra Diffendaffer. Those are the birthdays. The anniversaries are Steve and Pat Parsons on June 10th. They celebrate, celebrated 26 years. Keith and Susan Crawley on the 15th celebrate 38 years. Dwayne and Phyllis Berry on the 18th, 72 years. Mark and Maggie Mills on the 20th, 48 years. Jay and Lori Thompson, the 24th, 16 years. And Charlie and Margaret Green on the 27th, two years. Yay! Now, if we've missed any one, let us know. But for now, let's, uh, is there anybody else that has one? Yeah? Yay, happy birthday. Anybody else? In June? Yes. Daughter-in-law of Bonnie. Marna's mom's 92nd birthday today. Yay. Let's all sing. And as always, if you do decide to give in honor of someone's birthday or anniversary, those monies go to Children's Ministries right here at Crossroads. Please stand for our call to worship. The name of the Lord is majestic. The mountains tower and the seas roar in praise of God. When we look at the heavens, we rejoice in God. The moon, stars, planets, solar systems are a delight to us. Come, let us shout our praise to God. Lord, thank you for this awesome creation. Amen. Please join in singing Holy, 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 number 64 in your hymnal or on the screen.
please join me in the community prayer. Father, Son, and Spirit, we give you thanks that comprehending you is not required. If there were none to qualify, your vastness, enormity, and love are more than we could attempt to comprehend. Yet we can also trust that you are a God of wisdom, truth, and love that has been displayed in the person of Christ and that enlivens us today through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Since we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, let's pass the peace with one another. wind that I so strong ye clouds that sail and have no
The scripture this morning is from Proverbs 8. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries out, To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When he established the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker and was daily his delight rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighted, delighting in the human race. I love Trinity Sunday because it invites us to go deep into the vastness of the nature of God. I love uh, reading the great theologians like Elizabeth Ochtemeyer and, uh, and others that help us to delve deeply into these ideas. The doctrine of the Trinity is not, uh, you'll, you'll not really find it clearly in the scripture because it it evolved throughout the history of the people of God. It took shape out of the New Testament, the the testimony of the scriptures uh, beginning with their witness to Jesus Christ. Most of the writers of the New Testament were originally Jews who believed in one God, but when the apostles and disciples encountered Jesus of Nazareth, and witnessed his life, death, and resurrection, they became convinced that he was fully Emmanuel, God with them, the person of God incarnated in human flesh. After Christ's resurrection and ascension, the apostles and disciples also found that God and Christ continued fully to be with them in the person of the Holy Spirit, as Christ had promised. So the the one God of the Old Testament was fully present in Father or Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God was one in three persons, not only Creator, but also Son, Holy Spirit, all are holy, divine. The Son also having been fully human and incarnated in human flesh in Jesus of Nazareth. The Son who is with us is God. The Holy Spirit who comes to us as we gather together is God. They are not lesser deities than God the creator, the maker. And to all of them, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we pray and give our adoration. It's rather strange that After saying all that, the scripture designated from the lectionary for the Sunday, the day of Trinity, uh, designates a passage about wisdom, another image of God. Wisdom, or Sophia, from the Old Testament, as if wisdom is somehow a person of the Trinity. I love the image of wisdom and the name Sophia. Sophia, we are told, was the first of God's creations. She is called Lady Wisdom, who is a playful teacher who delights in humankind. The passage is a way of coming to terms with the deep awareness of God as both almighty and transcendent on the one hand and present in 
and with creation on the other. Uh, yesterday I was up at Grand Mesa Camp and last night we had a worship service and we talked about this and we talked about what it means to be in the midst of that beautiful scenery up on Grand Mesa. And it, you almost become a part of the nature around you. And, and so these words about Sophia and wisdom um, come alive as you're in the midst of such beauty. Wisdom in scripture has a wide range of meanings. Sometimes wisdom refers to a person's literary skill or to someone's acute sense of justice or to an exceptional grasp of knowledge or to someone who is really clever and playful. The Sophia texts essentially say that discipline study of all things an earnest search for wisdom and understanding, as the NRSV uh, translates it, understanding, leads to Sophia, the one who is at the heart of all that one studies. The liturgical context of Trinity Sunday, it's, in it, it is impossible to read the description of wisdom in the Proverbs without calling to mind the evan evangelist description of the pre-incarnate Christ as the word in John 1, 1 through 5. There we, we meet one, we again meet one who is the divine counsel to God in the work of creation. Word rather than wisdom. In the beginning, the word was God. The word was with God. Once again, the peculiarities of grammatical gender are no doubt at work. For the Greek word for wisdom, Sophia, is feminine, like its Hebrew counterpart, because God's wisdom is not just personified as a literary figure of speech in the gospel, but actually incarnated in the human person of Jesus. The evangelist shifts the imagery from wisdom to word. The grammatically masculine uh, logos in Greek. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit are the one God who, brings, who works to bring us the divine counsel, wisdom, and knowledge that we need. John Nesbitt was the best-selling author of Megatrends, and in it he said that every day between 6,000 and 7,000 scientific articles are written, and that because of the sheer number of scientists and advanced retrieval systems, knowledge now doubles about every 20 months. But Nesbeth describes our, decade, our, our time in society as one in which we are drowning in information, but starved for wisdom, starved for depth. This is a particularly useful passage given that we're in graduation season, baccalaureate season, maybe a little bit past it, but we've just come out of it, high school and college commencements at this time of year. Lots of graduates at all, of all ages are facing new possibilities, new transitions. I've talked to two or three people just in the past week who have chosen to go back to college and finish it up, having that desire of in-depth learning. Some are, are, are nervous about careers and, and, and the future, and there's a sense of foreboding. And so at that kind of moment, Proverbs is at its best. It offers lots of advice about life and living. Our literary form before us is that poetic wisdom, and the rhetorical function is twofold. To steer the reader clear of bad behaviors that lead to death and positively to steer us down the path that leads to life. I encourage you to spend some time in the book of Proverbs. It, it can be so uplifting and so um, stabilizing. 
The final part of the chapter personifies wisdom who works with the divine to create and make the world and its inhabitants. And in the beginning was wisdom. Wisdom gives life, therefore chooses life. Carlisle Stewart said that the text of Proverbs attributed to Solomon, but most probably written by sages, teachers, and bureaucrats of the intellectual elite of Israel and Judah, reflects an urgent cry for wisdom throughout the land. The people are in need of wisdom, and wisdom is in search of people who will practice its virtues and extol forever the higher principles of courage and justice, righteousness, and truth. That's what we're all about here. Those are the values that we have in our own um, work as the people of God. Courage, justice, righteousness, and truth. The absence of wisdom is folly. The beginning of wisdom is the fear and respect of God. So where is wisdom for you? Where is that knowledge of God Where are the people who embody and espouse its higher values and who are sacred keepers of her holy writ? We hope that we can get people to hear, that we will hear, and that we will understand that need for knowledge and truth. It's no accident that the writer here uses a kind of literary irony and satire to dramatize the point for the need of wisdom to find its place in the human mind and heart. Since some people will not seek wisdom, wisdom then has to seek them out. Seek out the minds and the hearts and the souls to um, help us to become those seekers and believers of truth. In reading this passage, we might say that many of the same problems and distractions facing the people of Israel and ancient societies still plague us today. Wisdom is crying out more now than ever, crying out for souls who will seek, embody, and practice her precepts so that the people will return to a true knowledge and love of God then people of God and the larger society will come to realize righteousness and wholeness and peace. Wisdom is crying out for peace in the streets, peace in our workplaces, peace in the schools, peace in our homes. Fear stalks and terrorizes and imprisons us. Some communities and neighborhoods are under siege. I don't know, it seems like there was a day when we felt safer. Maybe it was an illusion, but certainly not now. Gone are those days when you could feel Uh, confident in leaving your car unlocked with everything in it. Gone are the days when you could leave your house unlocked. In this day of violence, um, day of anger, day of resentment, these times of uh, war, wisdom is crying out for sanity and light. Wisdom is crying out for peace. Wisdom is depicted as being the first thing God created and essential for us, an essential characteristic for all of us if we're going to experience the joy of living, if we're going to continue to invoke the Holy Spirit in our midst. The writer of Proverbs expresses this Very clearly, happy is the one who listens to me, wisdom, watching daily at my gates, watching beside my doors, for the one who finds me finds life and obtains favors.
from the Lord. Wisdom cries out for you, church. She needs seekers of love and light and truth. We can stop her crying and be more inquisitive, courageous, caring, and committed. May it be so for us this day. Let's pray together. Gracious God of wisdom, God of spirit, God of truth, we thank you for the many ways that we can access your nature. We thank you for the sense of peace, the sense of hope that comes to us as we think on these things, as we teach one another what it means to be at one with you. May we continue to seek out your nature and to hear the voice of your wisdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing together, Sing of the Lord's Goodness, number 3010, in the Green Book. time that we lift up together our joys and concerns and I have a few to start out with today. Uh, Bonnie Miller's brother Roy Hetzel is having surgery to remove his thyroid on the 23rd. We lift him up Lord in your mercy. We pray for Tom McGee who has had a bad fall and is in a lot of pain. We lift him up Lord in your mercy. Linda Miller's foot surgery is the 14th, so that would be Tuesday. So lift her up, Lord, in your mercy. 
Anyone else out there? Yes, Cheryl. Debbie Harvey is better, but she's still in the hospital. So, so prayers for Debbie Harvey. Lord, in your mercy. And? Cheryl's nephew, Harrison, is having health issues. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Uh, memorial services for Winnie Queen today. Um, uh, prayers for her family, nieces and nephews, and all of the Queen family. Lord, in your mercy. Where is it at? Winnie's house, and what time? At five. at five, okay. Five at Winnie's house today. Others? Let's be in prayer. Pray. and loving God, we thank you for all of our blessings, for this beautiful day, for the place that we live, for the love of our family and friends, for those of us who can um, confidently say that we are in great health. Um, what a blessing as we lift up so many who are not. God, we thank you for the blessing of each other, the, the beauty and the miracle of gathering together in person and all that uh, your Holy Spirit brings us as we gather. We thank you for that, uh, that enlivened, regenerated, restored feeling that comes from gathering in your name. We thank you for taking our burdens. We thank you for uh, your grace that not only nudges us before, uh, before all things, but also uh, covers us and forgives us, shows us that we are yours and that we are loved. Gracious God, we... We have many that we have prayed for and many more that are on our hearts. We ask that you would relieve our burdens so that we might just leave them at your feet knowing that your, your mystery and power and healing is more than we can imagine. We ask you to go with us in our own lives and in our own families, but also as a family of God, as a church family. Continue to guide and direct us in all of our ministries. We, we are passionate about all of our ministries, and so we ask a special blessing upon each one of them, each way in which we gather, each room that is used for uh, so many, so many ministries. 
so much transformation happens inside the walls of this church. And so we pray your blessing on each and every one of them. God, we, we, uh, we thank you, we love you, we love each other. And we ask for your continued blessing as we go out into the world to invite others in, to tell others about your peace. And we pray all of this in the strong name of Jesus the Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. It's the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. take a moment to thank all of you for your continued support of our ministries here at Crossroads United Methodist Church. It makes a difference. We, um, it, it, we're not um, protected from inflation, and so all of our costs go up as um, everybody else's does. So um, I just want to thank all of you for your continued support uh, it is a blessing to have all of you here. I want to give an offering of a prayer of offering during this time just to bless the gifts that come in during the week, the gifts that are given um, online and the gifts that come in the mail and the gifts that come uh, that are placed in the box on the way out. Um, through holy wisdom, the Lord has made the world as a rich dwelling place, giving us dominion over the created order. As God is mindful of us and of our needs, let us now be mindful of our obligation to be good stewards through our generosity and responsibility for God's gifts. O oh Lord, we rejoice with thankful hearts that you have given us this beautiful world in which we work and play, a world full of your wisdom and majesty. We offer praise with deepest gratitude that you've blessed us with your bounty as we return a portion of your blessing to us. Use these gifts as tokens of our devotion to increase wisdom in the world, to protect the world, to bless the vulnerable, to heal the sick, and to comfort the afflicted. Amen. Let's stand now and join in number 3017 in your green books. Come join the dance of Trinity.
the blessing of God, fountain of living water, flow within us as a river of life. May we drink deep of her wisdom. May we never thirst again. May we go through life refreshing many as a sign of healing for all. Through the one who is life eternal. Amen.